everybody. Uh, it's hot tub time, and I, I'm here. Why do you seem so nervous? <laughs> <laughs> it's hot tub time with Buck Angel. This is the first time I've had a man in the tub with me for hot tub. So right on. It is. How many men with vaginas though? Uh, well, zero also. So I'm I'm two for two. It's my first time for both. Um, so, Buck is joining me for our hot tub talk today. Uh, we are open for conversation and questions, so make sure that you ask them if you have them. Buck and I met through Guinevere Turner. Uh, Buck started dating Guinevere, and Guinevere was doing uh, Crazy Bitches, the first feature. And uh, we got to talking. We talked about my other project. Um, the Thin Pink Line, this beautiful French project that Buck is attached to as an actor. Um, but when I started thinking about Crazy Bitches 2, I asked Buck if he wanted to come on and play uh, John McLaughlin's, I'm sorry, Johnny Carrillo. He changed his name recently. <laughs> I haven't he cut did? it yet. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're, I'm not cut up to it yet. But anyway, he's playing his... Uh, husband in the feature but we I've just written a web series and it's going to show you how Buck and um, John meet it's awesome yeah. I'm excited I'm for you excited to give me the too. opportunity because you know how I feel about acting yeah I'm always nervous I know you're nervous it's all right it's okay he's gonna be great but um, so I just thought it would be I'm, I'm doing my crazy bitches series so I thought Buck could come on and uh, we could chat a little bit about life and love and acting and uh, anything else that comes up for any of you guys? Yeah. Uh, and Bob's taking his things. Out. Oh, uh, my husband, for those of you who don't know, sits behind me and, and writes questions. So, <laughs> Bob is the best. Bob is the best. So, um, so Buck, why don't we talk a little bit first about acting, since that's mm -hmm. the subject uh, at hand. Yeah. Um, and you are nervous about... Which is weird because I'm not a nervous guy. I'm so, I'm sorry, ah, I'm so okay about pretty much everything. Yeah. But I think because I had a really bad experience acting my very first time. What happened? Well, the director was a little bit insane. And honestly, he was very uh, hard. And he and and I never act. It was my first acting right. job, and but so hard, hard and like like he just wanted he you was to very, do what um, you were gonna do and just yeah. get it done. And he's an acting coach, uh -huh. and he, I think he's an old school acting coach, and he has a very specific way of doing things. And he would get very angry at me if I didn't do it right. And I'm like, dude, I've never done this before. Yeah. So he would say, like, try the lines another way, and I would try it another way. But he's like, no. And then he would just get frustrated with me, and I'm not good with frustration at all. No. Well, I no. also think, you know, actors, I, in my experience, because I was an actor for quite a long time, and I still would consider myself an actor because I yeah. I would do it in a heartbeat if anybody wanted to hire me. <laughs> right, right, right. But, um... But actors are already in a place of vulnerability. Yes. When they come to the set. And if you're going to be giving direction, you need to be nurturing and, and give them the buoy underneath them so that yes. they can feel safe yes. and have the freedom to actually well explore I, and make uh, mistakes. That's like with anything. If yeah. you're gonna take somebody into a new job and you're the boss and you're, they're not stocking the shelves right, but you're like, mm -hmm. you fucking idiot, you're supposed to, they're immediately not gonna wanna stock the shelves. Yeah, no. And they might stock it all wrong. Yeah. And that's what happened to me, I kept flubbing up my lines, I kept forget. honestly, the most thing for me that I had the most trauma around was memorizing my lines, because I don't, I'm not good at memorizing things. I'm a yeah. speaker from my heart, I'm not right. a speaker, for, I don't write my, speeches I li literally don't even know what I'm gonna say when I get on stage right it just comes so I felt like it was difficult for me to remember lines right and know what that means right. but you know who really helped me a lot Guinevere Turner Guinevere, yeah she, she totally not. helped me a lot yeah. she said relax yeah breathe <laughs> well it's always it's always uh, like uh, one of the first things you say to an actor is just breathe sometimes I, I've actually been um, directing somebody and and you know they've been you know in the middle of something and I'll go and they'll be like, did you just do that for me? And I'll be like, yeah. Like, 
just indicating that totally. maybe this is the time you can you can breathe again. You know, yes. there's trick. Other, I can show you some tricks too. No, but I feel do. I really like you anyway. I connect to you, so I'm I'm very. Uh, it's why I said okay to your to your to to your project because yeah. I feel safe with you and yeah. I don't feel that you're gonna make me feel uncomfortable acting no. or, or being in that role. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's why I I picked another. I actually did another film in New York that the director was amazing. Oh, cool! And he made me feel very comfortable and he was just very okay. So I think that hopefully it comes off well yeah. on screen. Well, I mean, I think that half of your battle when you're acting is. I, 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 actors would probably hate that I say this, but yeah. I think that actors, for the most part, if you're close to, if you're playing a role and you just bring out your own natural thing, you're yes. going to be powerful. You're going to have something uh, that moves other people because it's truth, right? Right. Act yeah. Acting is truth. Yeah. I mean, not, not to get actor schmacker about this, but it is. No, but I think that that's a really important thing for anybody, yeah. even not being an actor, can understand. Yeah. But the one thing I want people out there to understand is this. Acting is a gift and a skill. Yeah. Not everybody can do it. Not yeah. everybody can do it. No. I don't believe it. No. And I believe when no. you see a good actor, that guy is like, or woman or whoever is gifted. Yeah. Robert De Niro is gifted. He's gifted. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I just uh, I just realized I forgot. Hold on. You forgot to put the bubbles on. I forgot to put the bubbles on everybody because it is a hot tub. Do you see that? Um. See. So Bob is holding a question up. Uh, are you wanting to play normal, everyday men in a film and veer away from what, Bob? Veer away from trans roles. Am I, am I wanting to play everyday normal men and veer away from trans, trans roles? roles. I, don't, I don't do trans roles. Good. I do whatever role. And so that question is a great question. And it also speaks a lot to this idea that you need to hire trans actors to play trans characters. I'll tell you what, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Now, I get myself into a lot of trouble with this, but you know me. I'm very... I've gotten in trouble for this one, too. But it's my belief, yeah. and I'm not going to put my belief aside just because I don't want my community to crap on me, but this is the realization of it. I think a trans person, like myself, should be able to play any role. You should. I don't think I should just be playing trans roles because I'm trans. It's like saying a black actor should only be playing right. this specific role, right. right? Why can't a black actor play a white role? Right. Why not? Well, I agree. I mean, I, I, I agree. I usually, unless there's a specific reason, I usually yes. cast yes. Uh, kind of blind to all of that. Because yes. it's really you want the person that embodies the... The idea of the subject, yeah. right? And so, yeah. so I get the idea that we have to hire trans actors more to play these roles. But I think we're limiting ourselves as trans actors to say that we can only play or we should only be playing that role. As a director, right. I'm a director of porn movies, but right. still as a director, and as a director, yeah. are you going to just pick Joe Blow because he's trans no, but to if play? He's good. <laughs> but if he's good, <laughs> that's the point. You can't be limited to only hiring trans actors to play trans roles. Right. What if they're not a good actor? Right. Then your whole film is screwed up right. because it comes back down to what we were talking about, acting. Right. It's a skill. Not all trans people are not even... Not, not even cisgender people. Right. It's the actor. It's the actor. Yes. I had this whole conversation a while back when the whole um, there was a whole. I do these uh, for those of you who don't know. I do these chats. They, they usually every Tuesday, but I'm doing hot tub right now. But um, when the whole boys don't cry thing happened right. with Kimberly Pierce on the on the on the yes. at, at the college, and Disgusting. I just felt so bad because you know. For her to get that film made, it's like there's economics that go toward getting anything made. It's like we have to raise money for the web series. Yes. We have to, you know, you can't just make them. And when you get a budget at her range that was at that point like two or two point five, yeah. You have to get names of some yes. level attached. Yes. And for her to have made a Oscar winning movie, she had to get an actor that was Oscar winning level. And in 1995, I was, my point was like, when, where, who in 1995 do you know that was a... Me? Uh, I actually went out for that role. Did you? Yeah, because I owned an agency here. I owned a casting agency here called Dragon Talent. What don't you do? But it became a I mean big that. What talent. doesn't he do? <laughs> a big talent agency. And we casted that. We casted a lot of the extras on mm. that film. That's and cool. I remember when it came through looking for the actors. And I, even though I'm not an actor, I just did it anyway. Yeah. I just did it anyway just to do it. Yeah. She was looking for trans actors. In 95, there were no. She made an effort. Oh, so, well, that's good. So, I'm going to say it on Facebook, fuck you. 
fuck all those young kids in and ever what it was Evergreen State College. I know exactly in Washington State. And those kids are disrespectful. That woman changed the trans, mm -hmm. the trans history. She brought awareness that's disrespect to our elders and to the people. She's not even trans. She's a lesbian. Yeah. yeah. What they did to her was disrespectful, yeah. wrong, and not okay. And that's yeah. the way I feel about it. Yeah. That is history. Yeah. That's Without that and, movie. You know, I'm a little straight girl. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, little straight girl. <laughs> uh, I might go under one these days. Um, I, and I. At that time, I knew no trans people. I had no understanding or even consciousness around it. And after I saw that movie, it changed me. Yes. It changed me. It changed the, 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 just the understanding of who was there and what life was about and, and who needed championing and, and what horrible things were being done. And Oh my God, that movie changed everybody's life. Yeah. Why do you think it won an Academy Award? I know. It no, didn't win an Academy true. Award. So those young children out there who disrespect the elders of our community and disrespect the history of our community. Shame on you. Sit down, listen, and move forward. Don't don't attack our own yeah. people. You yeah. can attack our own people if they're doing things detrimental to this community, but you cannot attack people who are moving us forward. Yeah, and I feel very, very upset about what those children did. They were calling her names, oh, like yeah. bitch, and yeah. just mean, ugly, yeah. nothing, nothing intelligent. Yeah. Nothing intelligent came out of their mouth. So if you're gonna yeah. protest things, at least be intelligent about it. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's wrong. That whole thing was hard. Um, has working in porn limited your ability to work in mainstream roles? Oh, I oh, love that that's question. A good, one. good question. <laughs> ding, Thank ding, you. One hundred and ten percent. Yeah. It has hindered me as a speaker, it has hindered me in getting e anything outside of pornography. Okay. But that said, I can't let my pornography go. It is my activism. Yeah. It is part of what I do. It will always be. I won't lie. I did try to do it. I did try to sort of disconnect myself from pornography in order to become a bigger uh, mainstream speaker. Right. But you can't. Yeah. Uh, once you do porn, it's always going to be there, yeah. no matter what. So I had to embrace my porn work and say, I'm a pornographer. I'm not. I'm tired of people shaming me around it. And look. I'm doing mainstream. You're yeah. asking me to do things. Yeah. All kinds of people are asking me to do things. I'm, I'm doing all kinds of mainstream yeah. stuff because I stay true. Yeah. I believe it. Stay true to yourself yeah. and your message. Yeah. And I also think that it's just a matter of changing times to some degree where uh, some people might feel like it's easier to get a film out there. I mean, but I will say that we had that little run in with that one person that got really mad at me for <laughs> hiring you. I got I got completely it was my first experience being like majorly trolled on uh, Facebook. It was awful. I can say it was like, what are you doing? That is so mean. I'm like, I'm just don't get it. Yeah. And Buck's the nicest guy. Why are we even having this conversation? But it was a, a lot around your porn industry experience. Yes. But you know, I always say like right now I'm in a perfect place to hire you because I'm not beholden to anybody. Right. My money comes from right. donors or small investors. Right. I'm being able to cast the way I want yeah. to cast and nobody's right. telling yeah. me, Oh, you need because the budgets are small, I don't have to hire stars yes. stars. Yes. Yeah. Or even like you know, qualified name ish of course. type yeah. people. I can just hire who I think is right and best. And I can write uh, for me, I mean, it's like I'm gonna write you a role. I'm gonna write I, everybody I work with. Practically, I write a role for. Yeah. Because I can. But also. But when you start getting into that money game, it used to be. Right. Cut it out. Cut it out. Yes. Cut it out. Cut it out. But, yes. I mean, Laverne Cox and uh, Candace Kane have uh, really managed to transcend that issue. No pun intended. Yeah, but they but they never really were were in the sex business, No, no, right? that's true. It's not the same it, as the it, sex it, business. The thing is this, yeah. I have transcended the sex business. I am a, I am definitely have a name in activism right. and now you other do, for things. Sure. I do transcend, but though film, it is there. Film is hard. It is, a lot of things, people won't even hire me to do certain things because they find out that I have pornography attached to my name and that I have to continually fight for my right as a person who believes in my activism that that's not what I do anymore. I'm associated with it, but I am not a porn star. Right. <laughs> but I also think what's interesting is that you ch chose it, you controlled it, yes. you managed it, yes. you owned it. Yes. It is 
when you walked into the, the porn world, you didn't go, oh, I kind of need money and right. oh, do what you want. You were like, how do I create my own universe, right? right? Right, which is actually the thing that saved me. I created my own company, I created my own look, I created exactly what I want pornography to do for me. Pornography is activism. It's activism, it created a space for trans men like me who aren't connected to their bodies like I am. And it gave them a space to go, look, your body is totally awesome, dude. Yeah. And also gave space for people who are attracted to people like us to say, oh, I'm attracted to a guy like that. I'm, uh, okay, that's totally cool. Yeah. It did, it really yeah. actually transcended porn in a way that gave people permission to be attracted to guys like me and I think on some level. Yeah. Uh, oh, Jane, talk about the troll experience, what happened? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I'm not going to name names, but there was... <laughs> name names. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to do it. But there was, there oh, was, yeah. there, <laughs> there was somebody who, I, you know, I, I go out and I raise money for my shows, and I had been raising money for Crazy Bitches too, and I had done some private messages to a few people, and I messaged this one person who I've known to be supportive of the trans community, or I thought she was, and said, oh, and you might be happy to know that you know, Buck and Candace are in my film, and they're, you know, uh, and she was like, no, I'm not happy. I'm not, ha I'm not happy they're in the film, and she went on to just say nasty things about Buck, and I was like, I don't understand. My experience with Buck has been beautiful, and he's a loving man, and I just don't know where, do you even know him? Have you sat down with him? Because I think if you talk to him, I don't need to talk to him. And then she went off on me on that. And then I said, well, I don't know, why are you so mad at him? She goes, I don't need to educate you. She heard something she about heard, me. She read or heard She something. read yeah, something right. about me. Yeah, so I was like, uh, okay, but if you don't educate me, how do I? No, she goes, you go out and you do your research and don't talk to me till, till you do that. And then she cut me off because on she... Facebook and I was like, fuck you, man. You don't, <laughs> you don't get to end this conversation right now. <laughs> so I looked up her email address and I emailed her and I go, look, I looked it up and I think you're wrong. You completely misunderstood what Buck was talking about. Yep. And and you're seeing it from one position and yep. it's incorrect. We should have a dialogue about this. How dare you attack me? Blah, 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 blah. But the whole time she had asked me to keep it private. Yep. She said, please don't put this on Facebook. Make this a private conversation between us. I said, of course. I would... 100% respect that. Yep. I'm, not, I'm not in the business of doing that. And then after we clicked off after a couple more not so good emails, I go to my Facebook page and I see that she has she has tagged Buck. Yep. She hasn't named me by name, but she said a female filmmaker has hired Buck Angel to be in her film. Blah 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 blah. She's a racist. Oh, that's right. She called me a racist because I said, why are you so angry? And she happens to be black. So she goes, I said, why are you so angry? And she's like, are you calling me an angry black woman? Yeah, she's crazy. And I'm like, what? What? Yeah. What just, what happened? So I was a racist filmmaker hiring a... A transphobic, racist, sexist, misogynist. misogynist. Let's click them all. Right. You That's got all, all of them. I'm, every, I'm yeah. everything. I'm everything. And so all her little followers, which there were a lot of, hopped on and were like, ah, you know, she sucks and Buck sucks and blah, blah, blah. And they just, it went on and on and on. And then Buck emailed, Buck texted me, he goes, I, I'm really sorry about this, but this thing happened. And I'm like, oh, I know. It was me. <laughs> Just let it go because they love it. Tr trolls live for it, kids. Yeah. Trolls live for that. And that person right there, no names, yeah. is a psychopath. Yeah. She's a sociopath. Like she goes to events and like just calls people out. She has nothing better to do. Here's the deal. Ask me anything. If any of you out there have any concern about anything that I've ever done, I'm probably one of the most accessible people on the internet. You are. If you send me an email, buckangel, buckangel.com. If you send me a Facebook, a Twitter, an Instagram, all buckangel, I will answer any question you have about me. People make shit up because of this. Because I speak my truth. And my truth doesn't necessarily coexist with the rest of what the trans community believes in. I'm a 55 year old, 20 plus years transsexual man. Right. I've had a lot of experiences in my life. They aren't always gonna be what you wanna hear, but yeah. that's not my problem. Right. I mean, I think that's, that's well, uh, would Buck prefer to be labeled a man as opposed to a trans man? Great question, I love that question. Would I, I most definitely live my life as a man. I'm most definitely in the binary. I'm very binary, I'm very much, um, 
uh, I had what we call the sex change back in the day. I went from being a woman to changing my sex to a man. And that's how, that's why I don't label myself trans or transgender because that's a whole new movement of people who live under the label of trans and it's an umbrella term. I'm not an umbrella term. I'm a, I'm a yeah. transsexual man <laughs> who lives his life as a man. But you know, that's caused some rift in the trans community for sure because of the well, whole language. I think that we're getting into that problem of micro labeling yes. and micro yes. judgment yes. and micro management. Yes. It, it's really hurting. I think it's hurting everybody. And it's everybody. not just the trans community. Yeah. And it's not just the LGBT community, which yeah. has a huge problem with that as well. It's like every community that is trying to like forge uh, some yes. sort of strength is subdividing in these yes. little... Want to know why? 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 Uh, here's why, why I do you believe. Think? I believe it's that. I believe it's the internet. I believe it's this disconnect that we don't sit in the hot tub together with a glass of wine and have a conversation. And me and you disagree, and that's okay. We can disagree. It doesn't mean I don't love you. It doesn't yeah. mean you're not yeah. my friend. I want people to disagree with me. I don't want everybody to agree with everything I'm saying. What a boring world. Right? It would be weird. But what's happened is the internet has made a false sense of security for people just to be a specific way and say, you have to be. I know for the trans community, we have what's called gatekeepers. Right. And those gatekeepers are language gatekeepers, <laughs> the way we look, the way we dress, the way we right. act. And it's why I speak out about it as a cult. That's cult behavior. That's not community behavior. Community behavior is this, Yeah. right? Yeah. Different attitudes, different things, different beliefs, and we come together with one common goal. But yeah. that's a community. A community isn't made up of people with the same. Guess what that is? That's a cult. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not in a cult. I don't even want to be near a cult. I well, want to be I, free. It also goes to this problem that everybody wants everybody else to be, to fit a mold. Yes. And, and if you look at what's happening, um, you know, around our country today, there's a lot of division where if somebody looks differently, behaves differently in any way, uh, there's a whole faction of people yes. that have an adverse reaction. There's anger out yes. there, there's violence out there. It's yes. just a really um, uncomfortable, dangerous time yes. if you choose to follow your truth yes. and be a unique individual. Which is what you're supposed, especially and, in the trans yeah. world. Yeah. Especially in the trans world. We li I lived a miserable life. Do you think I'm gonna come in here and all of a sudden like conform to what somebody's right. telling me is trans? This is why I speak out about it. As a 55 year old trampa, I cannot let these young kids be bullied by people in our community to say that you're only trans if. Right. You are trans if you think you're trans. Right. Done. That's right. all you need to know. You're and a lady if you think you're a lady. Right. And you're a man if you think if you're I a man. If I think I'm a man. Yeah. It's that simple. You don't need the approval of anybody. Nobody. No. Nothing. However you want to be, however you want to identify. But we've missed that point. Yeah. And now we look to the, I think we look to this idea that we need people to tell us for, for approval. Right? I need the approval of my community. No, I don't. And no, that's yeah. the problem. So it's made people trigger happy, yeah. pe like just really deep into their idea yeah. that they can't function in life. And that's dangerous behavior. It is dangerous. And, and you know, it is, what you said is absolutely right. I mean, it happened, for me, it, with filmmaking, I've had to embrace the idea that I can't make everybody happy. Of course right? not. Yes. I can only make the films that I like to yes. make to tell the stories I want to yes. tell in the way I want to tell them. And yes. then if people come along, then great. The people come along, I hope they have a good time. But if if you don't like what I'm doing, I can't. Uh, oh what come am I on! Do you do think Fellini? That? Do you think Fellini was like, oh, yeah. let me just think here for a minute. Right. Are the people going to freak out on me because I'm making this hardcore? No, but he was also an artist. And yeah, I'm, I'm but you're crazy an artist. Bitches. No, that's <laughs> no, no, filmmaking is art. It is, it absolutely is. Pornography but, is art. All of everything that we do yeah. in a medium of film, photos, painting, yeah. it's all art. art, whatever, absolutely. it's art. Yeah. And they're missing that point. Now they're yeah. putting us in this. Well, you know, and did, did I ever tell you I used to get a whole bunch of shit for saying crazy, for calling my movie crazy Because uh, you're not allowed to say crazy. Because you can't say crazy bitches. Oh. Because it was a, and then I was told oh. I was setting um, a bad message. feminist back 50 years, but uh, what was hardest transitioning 20 years ago? What was most, that's the same thing. What, what was, was the most the difficult thing transitioning? Oh, 20 years ago, the most difficult thing about transitioning was doctors. Number one, there were no doctors. Number two, there was nobody that believed me. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. All my therapists said to me that you're just a very male identified female. Right. Uh, try to piece that together. I don't even know what that means. But that was the language they had. They had no language around transsexual, which is what I was and am back then. 
transsexuals. They didn't even know how to deal with me. I put me, they put me in a hospital, a mental hospital. They told me that I was sick. They gave me antidepressants. They tried everything to push it down and out. It's like saying you're not gay, right? It's like saying, nope, you're not gay. You're da 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 da. Try to be with a man and see what happens. You know, it didn't work, and that's so. The hardest thing was finding people to believe me. To believe in you. To believe in me. Yeah. And yeah. one day a therapist said to me, I believe you. She actually said those words. I believe you. And I was like, I, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> could you repeat that one more time? She saved my life. Yeah. She saved my life. Well, you know, when I see pictures of you when you were young, I would not have a problem. But at times it changed. But I would yeah, not have had a problem just, knowing. Yeah. yeah. How was oh. that? I'm sorry, Bob. How has that changed? How has that changed? Yeah. Oh my God. It's like night and day now. And why I get so mad at these young kids. The privilege that these youngsters have, not because of me, but because of people before me, and today you. they can go to the doctor and just go like this. Yeah. I want to be trans and I want to take hormones. You know what the doctor says? Okay. Right. You know what happened when I did that? You need to get a note from your therapist. You need to be dressing like a man for X amount of months. Right. I had to go through a whole process. Did you say I've already been dressing like a yeah, man? Yeah, I did. I said, look at me. <laughs> I've already done it for about I've like done oh, it. 25 years. And my doctor never was did. It I was it 25? Were you 25? Yeah. yeah. No, it was, um, how, many long, how long have I transitioned? No, or no. I was 28. You were 28. Yeah. Yeah. And so the doctor didn't even work with trans men like me. He, I was his first. Like, I was his experiment. He even said I was a guinea pig. Yeah. I'm the guinea pig. So, you know, when you're desperate, you do it. Link yeah. Link the changes to movies, film, and Boys Don't Cry. Oh, I see. Right. Like the changes since Boys Don't Cry. Well, nobody believed. Okay, that poor person. Oh, my God. Nobody believed Brandon Tina. Yeah. The same thing. Yeah. Brandon and I are the same person. Yeah. But guess what? Somebody believed me, and here I sit. But nobody what? believed him. Was he about the same age? Yeah. Was he? Yeah. Yeah, and nobody believed him. He lived in like Idaho or some something, yeah. well, Nebraska. Yeah. You know, it's like he was a little tomboy like me. He was a little kid, you know, like doing that thing, and nobody believed him. And he was finding like I did. He was stuffing yeah. socks. And yeah. that was the thing, and everyone thought he was a little boy. Yeah. Everyone thought that about me. But yeah. the thing that's changed between that and now is that people now believe. Right. People believe you when you say, I feel, you know, when people are believing 10-year-old kids, they're believing 8-year-old kids, they're believing 5-year-old kids. Well, how, how do you feel about that, uh, that idea that um, if a 5-year-old says to their parent, I am a little boy, right. and I want to be treated like a little boy, and I want to dress like a little boy, like, how do you, how do you feel like that's healthy and should be... Uh, you know, followed with a hundred percent. I do. And when yes. when do you think the transition? Uh, right. It's a great question. I actually been working a lot with parents, which is so. I mean, really, I feel so privileged that the parents come to me. They come to me. They come to me, and they're like, "We're uh, we don't know what to do with you know Susie who feels like Tommy." And I'm like, "Just listen to Susie, who's yeah. Tommy. Just let them be Tommy. You don't have to do anything. Nothing. Zero. The only thing you have to do is say, "I love you, Tommy." You're awesome, Tommy. What do you want to wear today, Tommy? Right. The thing that I that I think is also fascinating and awesome is that you can stunt, okay? You can give hormone blockers. I wouldn't give my child hormones to change. But what I would do is block puberty. Okay. Because as right. we know, puberty is the cause of everything. Oh, God knows. <laughs> it doesn't matter Every who one you of are. Us. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. That's why I can speak that when I speak. Think of puberty. Now, think of your puberty. You are becoming a woman. You are yeah. so excited. I was becoming a woman. I wanted to kill myself. Yeah. So that's the difference right. of that. And now well, you and can I'll, block it. I'll also say, puberty is not, oh, I'm becoming a woman excited. Right. A lot, for a lot of women or right. men, it's like, oh, my God. I'm yes. I mean, puberty for me was, and I talked about this yes. with Candace because I was like, uh, so Candace Kane, um, I talked about it to Candace and said, you know, look, I think that we have a lot in common because what you are telling me you experienced when you were transitioning, uh, I mean, when you were going through puberty, is... Yeah. The same feelings I was having going yes. through puberty. What is happening to my body? <laughs> Why is this people dealing with me differently? They're looking at me funny. Yes. What is my sexuality? How, I don't. How do I handle this? Yes. We had a very, very similar experience of going through. Amazing. It. And I always say that the that, that we all become linked in our yes. in our similarities because you know your experience is only different in that you got denied the right to move forward the way right. you felt it. Where you were like, and I wasn't sure I wanted it. Yeah, but you were still. But it, there, was just, no there was no negativity around it. There was no negativity around it. None. It's abuse, but there was no negativity around it. But not it, like, right? yeah. No. 
Like I'm growing right. boobs going, oh my right. God. Yeah. And all the boys who I was playing with on the street yeah. were going, ew. Ew, it's a girl. Ew, it's a girl, <laughs> actually. And like, I'm just like, holy crap. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, like it's not yeah. cool for people like me. So, yeah. so that said, you can actually give children hormone blockers that will block Right, or puberty. Um, it blocks the puberty right. from happening right. until that child is 10 or 11 or 12. And said, and you can really tell at that age a right. lot. I you really think? believe. I, yeah. uh, yes, I do. How important is LGBT history to today's youth? Oh my God, I'm a big. Maybe because I'm an old trampa, and maybe because I am an elder in the community. I believe in it because I can remember when I was 20, and I was like those stupid old gays. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. And now that I'm an elder, I'm like, oops. <laughs> but honestly, it's the most important thing. We cannot, I, I fight for those rights every day, not necessarily my voice, but without elders, we would not be in the space we are today. Done. It's that, that's all we need to say. Without elders, youth need to understand that there's difference in language, there's difference in a way of doing things, but it doesn't make you or me better than each other. It makes us just a different experience. I also sometimes think that you have to be careful because like, for instance, with the abortion rights issue, right? you have a disconnect right now a little bit between a very young generation yes. who knows nothing about the fight. Yes. My generation that sort of knows a little bit about the fight, but wasn't, I yes. wasn't old enough to be in it. And then <clears throat> the people that fought. Yes. We're still in the middle going, yeah, we got to protect this. This was a horrible thing. Yes. And there's a, there's a younger generation that goes, yeah, that wasn't, I get it, but we have it. And it's all, but you can get lax about it. Yes. And all of a sudden, before you know it, they start rolling back your rights. And that's the thing youth don't understand, I think, today. And I think it's a thing that's happened more with this youth than any other youth within the LGBT dynamic. And I think I'm going to tell you why. Because we have what's called social justice warriors. And social justice lawyers live in a bubble and they think that they can just continually call people out because they think what they know is the right thing because they use the internet to do it and they do not do it here in public fighting on the front line they just stand behind that computer and actually by doing that you are actually hurting the cause because what you are doing is you're it, it is sort of like this fake bubble thing that's saying yeah. I can call everybody out yeah. this doesn't exist this isn't yeah. real when they're not even understanding what it means to fight, really fight, right. get out, go right. down to the press conference there, go out to your city hall, go out to a, con to none of those kids are doing that. So I think they live in this idea that they can put stuff on the internet without any factual or fact-based stuff and it just becomes. That is why I think the youth don't understand what has really happened to get us here. Yeah, and I think that's important. Okay. Um, so we're gonna we're usually a thirty minute show, so right we're gonna wrap it up. Is right there on. something that you wanna share or say or Well no, I'm just really excited to be part of this yeah. film and this web series and I think like really listen to me people. These kind of series are very important for our community, number one. Number two, people who are artists make these things because they want to give me a job as a trans person, which now opens the doors for other trans people. So here's the deal. You must support these kinds of series. Whether or not you like it or not, it doesn't matter. You have to support it because the only way to move forward in the world is to support our people. And she is one of our people, okay? So yeah. support the web series, support Crazy Bitches, support what we're doing, and please tell everyone that this exists. Thank yes, you very much. please. And also to let you know, I'm doing a, a little experiment this week and asking anybody that can do it to donate ten dollars. Ten dollars, it's not a lot. This is the is it backwards, Bob? No. <laughs> um, this is the website where you'll go to. The ten dollars uh, gets a huge thank you from all of us, all my beautiful actors and me and everybody that's involved in this project. It also gets you entered, you get a raffle ticket that enters you to win a baseball cap, um, a crazy bitch's candle, scented candle, because it is at a spa. But aren't you going to do or, something with or me? A, like or a, a signed DVD. Well, you're expensive. Oh, I'm, exp I'm expensive. I'm, I'm sorry. not 10 bucks. So for $10, <laughs> you get a thank you card and, and a raffle <laughs> ticket entered in. Uh, to win one of these things, and you can pick which one, whichever oh, one you I want. Know, I know, I know. But if you want to have lunch with Buck, I, I'm not cheap, kids. <laughs> uh, I, it'll go I'm up tomorrow, cheap, and it's five hundred dollars. Oh, that's cheap. Thousand dollars? 
you do a thousand, listen, if you do a thousand, I will make it worth your time and money. I promise you. You will never have an experience like that ever again. <laughs> Not only that, but if you donate ten bucks, I'm gonna donate uh, the Bucks Bomb CBD rub that is selling like mad. So any so here's the deal. The first person right now, right now, who gives 10 bucks, gets a Bucks Bomb roll, oil roll, which is, you're gonna freak out. You're gonna freak out, I only have like go. five left. Oh my God. So the first person who gives 10 bucks, gets a Bucks Bomb. And if you go up tomorrow, I will put Bucks lunch up for $1,000. There you go. And he will promise you a very good time. A bet better than you've ever had in your life, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confident. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my friends, you'll sign off. I love you all. We Talk love to you. you later. Thank you for supporting. Bye. Bye.